Here's something I received this last week from Raymond Hall, a physicist from Fresno University. It's a butterfly, which is, um, well, it's worked by solar power, would you believe? Let me just show, it's working at the moment fairly gently under ambient daylight, which is in the room. If I put a torch on the solar cell, which is just here, it suddenly gets very vigorous. Look at that, it's suddenly, woof, it's getting a lot of more power there because it's getting a lot more energy. There's a lot more electricity coming out. So let me show you the parts of this. I'll just get that into focusing. Oh, yes, very vigorous indeed. Oh, it's too much. It's bashing the side now. So let's have a look at the inside of this, because it comes apart, of course. Oops, it. So here's the gubbins. This is where it is. It, uh, this is the real stuff. There's an electromagnet there. The actual solar cell is that bit there. Can you see this bit down here is a solar cell? When the daylight hits that, it's enough to make it perform. And of course, underneath the butterfly, which I can't really get at, but in the, you can see as you can see a little black bit at the bottom of the butterfly, which is a, which is a magnet. There we are. And that's a silver color magnet. So that's that's be, that's being repelled. Gravity is trying to pull it down so it's just hanging vertically. But once it's um being kicked one to one side by the by the by the magnetic force that's the, the solar cells is out now I'll see if I can get it to settle again Just, blah, blah, blah. So that's daylight if I turn it the other way that would face the window and you get a bit more vigorous stuff but with a torch it really becomes very vigorous indeed so a superb version of uh, a, um, a solar powered automata very nice and it really goes on forever it, it won't, won't work, it'll turn off at night time, it'll stop, it'll just hang loose. But if you have uh, any light on it at all, including a room light, it performs. It's really beauty, so very grateful to Ray for producing such a, a nice object. He sent me some other things which are quite fun. There's a, something I did see actually at the Nuremberg Toy Fair, but I've forgotten how, how clever it is. It's a top which turns over like that, you just let it drop like that and it's because it's unstable. However, if you set it spinning like that, oops, let's it, get it to spin properly, here we are. And now you drop it, it won't, oops, let's it, get it going again. Set it spinning, drop it on the table, and it stays upright because of the gyroscopic force. If you don't have it spinning, it flips over, it's quite unstable. So a lovely way of demonstrating to kids how gyroscopic stability can be shown to work every single time. No turning over, there's enough. It's quite a heavy, quite a heavy piece of uh, metal inside there, which is creating a good, a good bit of moment of inertia. And it, from quite a height, it'll bounce happily. And then we, uh, 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 and it doesn't turn over. But if you stop it like that, then it's very unstable and flops all over the place. Boof. Oh yes, won't do anything. We'll up. So a nice way of demonstrating. Here's another charming little one, which is, um, can you imagine what this is for? Yes, one of those. But what about that long bit? Well, the idea is it's a cocktail stick. Stir, 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 stir. And when you finish stirring, you balance it like that. Isn't that cute? Very nice idea. So it's a cocktail stirrer plus one of those lovely mag... What do you call it? Cantilevered or... Anyway, you, you, I've forgotten the physics, but it's, the center of gravity is being brought forward, so it's right over the top there, and it's very, very stable like that, so it's over a glass. A nice one, that. He's also sent me one of these charming little, well, I think of them usually as being drinking birds, but this is my friend Tommy the T-Rex, and he's got a wet nose. What you should do normally is place him with a glass of water there. He's going to bend down, and he's going to... Have a slurp, 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 slurp. Then he pauses, thinks about it. Sometimes it sticks there. Let's see if it does it naturally, but sometimes there's enough surface tension there. And if I adjust the weight ever so slightly, I think I need to do that in order to pull it back up again. I think I'll, oh no, there we go, there we go, there we go. What I didn't realize with this, that if you take the glass of water away, that will go on for hours and hours. I timed it, five, ten hours. I also timed it, it took about 30 seconds to do its little dip and back again. So that's two a minute. So it does nearly a thousand cycles before it comes to rest. Which means if you um, 
let the wetness there sort of half evaporate when it's halfway through its whole life, you can show it to people and say, is this perpetual motion? It almost looks like it, because how else can it do that when there's no source of power anywhere? In fact, what's powering it is the evaporation here, which is creating a coolness in the head there, which draws the, draws the stuff up, draws the alcohol up until it tips over. And then uh, you'll see in a minute, there we are, a blob of air goes up and, and destroys the vacuum. And, tips it back again. So that will go on for a good 10 hours without any more, without any more of this stuff here. And they call it a sort of example of the latent heat of evaporation for, 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 for a bit of science, but there's a lot of science going on. That all the ones I've ever seen have been birds, usually sitting on the glass, but here's Tommy the T-Rex doing it instead. Here we are. One more goes. He doesn't need to be in the water because there's enough and now the evaporation starts and it cools it down, makes a vacuum, draws the alcohol up, the green. I like all the green too, green alcohol and green head and green stand. Yeah, that's a good one. So that's a good. The last one is, I think, my favorite. This, this is brilliant. It's a bit of 3D printing. There's some company in California which makes these. I'll bring my face in the view again. And all you do is you just um, send the company your, your money and you send ask for two words. That's what they ask you to do. Two words or put in an X axis and a Y axis or whatever you call them. And they'll then create two words. So in this one, he's done one, he's, he's done his own name, which is quite fun. So he thought he'd send one to Tim Rowett, that's me. And I'll see if I can get my name in position. T-I-M, and then running into that is my surname, Rowett, like that, so just about. And now what happens when we turn it 90 degrees, I don't know which way it is, we'll find out the other way, yes, there we go. What do we find here? I've got to get it exactly in view. Back a bit. I can't quite get my first letter there. We are G R A N D O. Uh, 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 not quite there. We think they're there, Grand Illusions. Tim wrote. Grand illusion, Tim Rowe, Grand Illusion, isn't that? And look at the, any other way, it's all nonsense. You can't make any sense of that, whatever. But when you get to exactly the right position for the two words, there's my name, and there's where I, there's where I have all the fun, Grand Illusions. Let's get this Grand, grand Illusion into focus again. It's a good, it's, good, it's a very well um, produced figure, this Oh, camera. What a beauty, isn't it? So many, many thanks to Ray Hall. I'm just in the middle of making up a little parcel to send back to him, plus some videos and some other fun and games. But he always comes up with most unusual things, and I'm very, very grateful to him. One for you, Ray. <laughs>